Lord, thank you for writing beautifully with your broken pencils. Amen. Jesus began speaking to Mother Claire. I do so believe in you. You have no idea how truly, deeply, and profoundly you are united to me, as truly we are one heart, one mind, and one body. Though you put yourself down, I raise you up. You are so very precious and profoundly close to me. You will not know it until heaven. I tell you this because I want you to have confidence in what I am telling you. Great confidence in what you are doing for me, because truly my spirit is alive and well in you. You just don't see it or understand it, yet it is visible to the simple and childlike, and our episodes nourish them like milk and honey, yet there is profound nourishment to be encountered there too. But mostly what I want you to know, my love, is how very dear you are to me and how much you resemble me in your thinking, in your desiring. And this is what it is all about. One must go way below the surface to see and feel the connection. How sad it is that you are set aside by the Christian community and falsely accused of all kinds of calumny and yet you still love and hold out hope for them. This is tragic to me, because so much goodness is flowing from me through you, and yet they will not drink. What good company you are, as the prophets of old were. They too were scorned and rejected. They knew the deep wound of rejection from their own, and yet they preferred to be ostracized than to compromise. This, too, is a mark of predilection. My heart dwellers, it is essential for you all to recognize that this dialogue between her and I is a gift to you more than anything else. It is not her gift. It is my gift to be shared with you so that you can pursue me and be brought into the same very deep and tender relationship. She is merely a vessel a very broken vessel at that, and each one of her scars is an opportunity for you to experience my mercy in your own lives. I have chosen her because she is weak in so many different ways that it covers just about everything you all struggle with. She is less bright than you are. She is more compulsive than most of you. She is impatient and flighty easily distracted, not capable of great fasting or self-denial, drifts in and out of her love affair with the world, flowers, etc. But she offers me the very perfect opportunity to speak to you about your faults and for you to understand that I am for you with all my heart. Many of you are far more intelligent, self-controlled, dedicated, focused, reliable. Oh, I could go on and on and on. But I have chosen the foolish ones of this world over those who are considered so very wise and capable. Yes, even as it is written, the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things. And the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God. That is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. That's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. What I am wanting to get across to all of you is that you have nothing to be jealous of 
in this handmaiden. She has more faults than all of you put together. And I am saying this as the Lord of all flesh and the author of life. I promise you, this is no exaggeration. So what is so different about her? Nothing really. She is very common. And that's what makes her the perfect example for all of you of what is possible with me. Give me your life, and I will do wonderful things with you. Give me your life, and I will live through you. Give me your failures and faults, and I will work through them to make my glory shine. Each one of you have more potential than she has. That is another reason I chose her. When she was studying the New Age, the devils passed over her because they wanted someone more gifted. She didn't qualify in more ways than I can tell you, but she qualified in my eyes because she was seeking the truth above all other things and was willing to come to terms with her lackluster qualifications. She knew that my love was all that mattered to her and the rest was irrelevant. To this day, her struggles still cause her to stumble, but I lift her up because she doesn't count on herself. She counts on me to do it. Yes, she puts forth effort, but I must meet her with the other 90% or nothing gets accomplished. I'm waiting for the rest of you, dear ones. When will you stop trying to be someone and turn over your nothingness to me so I can do with you what I like? I love broken pencils. A great artist can do amazing things with one little pencil. And that is how I see so many of you. Broken pencils, erasers worn down, very short and difficult to grasp and draw with. But I will amaze you with what I can do once you are totally yielded to me. So please, don't put this woman on a pedestal. Rather see her as a very common soul who frequently falls into a pit and must be extricated with my love. She has nothing to offer you but her faults and failures and a glimpse into my mercy and what it can accomplish with the lowliest of vessels. I promise you, I have not exaggerated about Claire's weaknesses. I have been bluntly honest, and she knows it. And I am telling it like it is because this channel is not about the hailing of some great prophetess. This channel is about the power of my grace and love in the life of a very little soul I have chosen to use to reveal my mercy in working with all of your failures and shortcomings. I could not have used her for this mission if she were anything more than nothing. What can I do with you who are willing to be broken and reformed into what I created you to be? It is beyond your comprehension to know this, beloved ones. Suffice it to say, I have very wonderful things in store for every one of you. Your eyes have not seen, nor has it even entered into your dreams, what I can do with those who love me and will submit to my breaking and training. But I do promise you one thing. You will be amazed when I'm done with you. And you will be contrite and humbled beyond words. And you will resemble me. Come, come into my arms, and let me make of you a vessel unto honor. My heart longs for you. Come and fulfill the destiny I have reserved for only you. Come, trust that nothing in this world can stop me from accomplishing my ends in your spirit. Do you want to be a saint? Come, I can do that with you as well. But the greatest of all is not what you will become, but who you are to me and how much I will drench you in my love and gratitude for giving yourself to me. Come. Come.